The Doctor Medical Apprenticeship has proven to be a very controversial subject. One of the videos that we released explaining a bit about it here has probably received the most comments of any of our videos. So I'm going to go through some of these comments and kind of pick them apart and share some of the reactions to what people have said in the comments. Very briefly, for those of you who aren't aware, the Medical Apprenticeship is a new incentive by the government to try and get people to go through medical training in hospital. It's almost, as the name suggests, an apprenticeship where people are learning on the job. They're doing it alongside a university to learn within those kind of nine to five, Monday to Friday hours. And then they are at the end going to have the same qualifications as a doctor and, and have the same abilities other than not being able to practice abroad. One of the key differences is that instead of paying for their education, they will be paid like most apprenticeships to be there. So it's a Monday to Friday, nine to five job. They'll be alongside the university where they'll be having lectures, doing placements. And then outside of that, they'll actually also be asked to do some of the regular hospital jobs, such as these roles here. Now, they get 27 days annual leave, which is similar to most NHS jobs. But other than that, they're either learning, they're going to placement, or they'll be doing one of those jobs. So it's a bit more full on in terms of the time spent working compared to the normal degree. But anyway, you can learn more about the nitty gritty of it in that video. Let's look at what people are saying. You are talking about this as if it was a good thing, but it is just an awful, poorly thought through idea. Even though the BMA has completely rejected the idea, it seems to be going through anyway. It is an insult to everyone who went to medical school and spent two years studying, followed by three unpaid years of placement by allowing some people to qualify with the same role, only having made money. Additionally, a medical degree is only one of the most intense and difficult degrees. And how is anyone going to learn all there is to know and become half decent doctor if they are working during the whole time when they would otherwise be studying? This idea is a complete insult to the medical profession. You are talking about this as if it's a good thing. Actually not true. If you watch the video, we aren't particularly sold on it. I think that it is untested and we're unsure of how it's going to land. But to be honest, I am not convinced that it is the answer to anything. And actually, I wonder whether those people who go through it may actually suffer a little bit as a consequence. And yes, I agree that there is a certain rite of passage and a certain growth that goes through getting through something as difficult as a medical school degree. However, there is a really steep learning curve on the job. You know, the, the classic analogy is that you learn to pass your driving test and then you really learn to drive. And that is true with medicine. And of course, you need a foundation and a really solid base of knowledge. But a large amount is learned on the job. So I do wonder the level of experience of the people who are making these sorts of comments, because I wonder if they understand just how much of a learning curve F1 and F2 is. Okay, next comment. Awful idea. There are already too many medical schools and too many medical students. Placements are going to become more overcrowded than they are and opportunities even more decreased. Not to mention the little issue of lack of F1 jobs in the future as well as specialty training posts. Well, I'm not sure because we do suffer from a lack of doctors in the UK and really the only way to meet that demand is to increase the supply. Yes, I know it must be a bit rubbish for people who are on placement and feel like they're kind of fighting for opportunities but really, unless we have a even better solution to the problem, we do need to increase the supply somehow. And okay, yes, maybe this isn't a perfect solution. And again, I'm not necessarily backing it, but it is something that we need to be doing towards addressing this problem. Okay, next comment. I honestly think many that are against it are just wrapping themselves up in elitism. From what I've read, the degree you get at the end of the apprenticeship is the same as the normal medical degree. I think that there are definitely questions about this, how this will be delivered. And of course, this isn't a silver bullet to fix the crisis in the NHS, but it will widen access to people to become a doctor. There are plenty of capable people that, uh, that will never become doctors because of their financial situation. This route, not only will they become a doctor, but they will still earn money whilst they train. Okay, uh, a lot to talk about here. Yes, I do think that there are some people who on some level are a bit sore because of the difficulty of going through medical school. And yes, again, that will gain a lot of knowledge and a lot of stuff that maybe is going to be tricky to get in an apprenticeship format. But I do agree that maybe some people are subconsciously a little bit sore that they've not been able to have a kind of, let's say, more financially easy route to it. I think the widening access part is an interesting point because although the intention is to make uh, medicine more accessible to all different people from all different walks of life, I think that it still doesn't quite solve it in the way that it hoped because there is still an issue of people coming from less well-provided schools that means that they 
don't maybe meet the grade requirements that is another inequality that hasn't been addressed with this fair enough it's not they can't do everything with this but that is a big area that is being missed out on and there are still exams and interviews and all of the stuff that people who come from more fortunate backgrounds will probably get a bit more training towards and probably more likely to get those places on the apprenticeship so, so again well intentioned but maybe not a perfect solution should we do a couple more I think the idea of having additional routes to study medicine is a good idea, but the way that this is being implemented is appalling. Reform the graduate entry system so there are more places for anyone with a degree already and allow students in those degrees to actually have access to student finance funding. Very good point actually, it's very difficult and a lot of graduates would make fantastic doctors, but financing is a massive issue. Actually, you can check out this video here where we talk about all the different circumstances and how it can be quite tricky, even if students get a place to actually be able to go to university, which is a tragedy because they can't afford it. So yeah, instead of having to take out private loans of up to 60 to 70,000 pounds, if you want to increase the number of doctors faster, four versus five to six years, or even make this an apprenticeship thing, a grad scheme for allied healthcare professionals who at least won't kill patients, but letting 18 year olds go in and have any sort of responsibility for a patient is frankly an idiotic approach. Well, that is making a lot of assumptions about something that we haven't seen in action yet. I imagine that people aren't stupid and they won't let people loose on their first day on patients with a level of responsibility. The same way that medical training lets people have slowly and graded increasing responsibility and uh, the kind of involvement that they have in patient care. I'm sure it will be very similar and they're not going to just let people lose straight away. It's interesting to compare to physician associates, PAs, and have a look at the data on them and how their performance is and compare to kind of how we expect this to go based on that. Next comment. All I see in these comments is a classic group medical students being jealous that they had to pay for their education. People complaining that their degree won't be as valued as the apprentices. In my opinion, it isn't fair to remove this opportunity from newer students just because you didn't have it. Yeah, fair enough, I suppose. Okay, final comment. Struggling to think how I could train an apprentice in proper clinical stuff if they haven't already learned the requisite background knowledge given they would be heavier on placement and less on lectures, dissection, lab, etc. E.g. how am I going to teach heart failure management the proper way, i.e. not algorithmically, when the apprentice may not have learned the concepts of preload and afterload yet or diuretic mechanisms. Yep. Fair enough, I think that is probably the biggest argument. Students do need to have a good level of conceptual understanding before they can go and do these things. And it's questionable as to how much that will be based on if they're just doing training on the job. I'd like to think that people have thought about this and they will, in their lecture time, make sure that they have that understanding. And again, we underestimate how much on the job learning and how valuable that actually is. But yeah, I think it needs to be balanced with good, textbook knowledge and baseline knowledge before we go into it. So like I say, I think it's still up in the air. It's going to be really interesting to see how this pans out. I would love to hear your comments if you have any further thoughts on this. But if you would like to go via the tried and tested old traditional route, I recommend you check out this video here. It's going to teach you exactly how to build your best application to maximize your chances of getting into a traditional medical course. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.